Hello friends, this video on microbes and human welfare part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at the next application that is in baking industry. So there also the microbes play a very important role. Now here the microbe which is used is yeast. So yeast belongs to the group of fungi and it is used as a raising agent in baking. Now what is a raising agent? Now you would have observed that for any sort of bakery item, for example, if you want to prepare a cake, what do you do? You need a dough and then you leave the dough for some time. Why do you leave the dough? So that it becomes fluffy and puffy. So what makes it fluffy? So what makes the dough expand or what makes the formation of bubbles on the dough? So how does that happen? That happens due to the presence of a raising agent. Raising means something which raises the dough. And that is what this microbe does. That is what yeast does. So here yeast is the microbe which is involved in all sort of baking processes. The most common yeast which is used for this purpose is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So this is the yeast which is commonly used in the baking industry and that is why this is often termed as the brewer's yeast. So what does this yeast do? This yeast converts carbohydrates because here also carbohydrate is present in the dough because the dough is made up of either wheat or flour and they all contain carbohydrate. So it converts the carbohydrate in dough into carbon dioxide and how this formation takes place, this also takes place by the process of fermentation. Now due to the formation of this carbon dioxide, the dough expands or the dough rises to form bubbles and that is why you leave it for some time because you give some time for formation of carbon dioxide from the carbohydrates. Now what happens is now you might ask that okay now the dough becomes I mean quite fluffy and puffy so what happens when it is baked? Now when you bake it the yeast dies, this yeast which is actually leading to the formation of carbon dioxide, that yeast dies once it is baked and as a result what happens, the baked product is very soft and spongy because earlier there were spaces being created because of the fluffiness. So now what happens is it becomes very soft and spongy. So if you look at any of the cake, you would have seen the texture, it is very soft and spongy. Now. You would have seen that if you look at the recipe of any bakery item, especially uh, cakes, often eggs are used, sugar is also used. So why are these kind of substances used? Because eggs or sugar, they all accelerate the growth of this yeast. Now if more yeasts are being grown, what will happen? More conversion of carbohydrates into carbon dioxide will take place and the dough will become more fluffy and as a result the baked item or the cake will become more soft and spongy and that is the purpose why eggs or sugar are often added in the recipe of a cake. Now as I said once it is baked the yeast will die off. Now what happens exactly? I mean how exactly this conversion of carbohydrates to carbon dioxide takes place? Now during the process of bread making, I mean the bread making, cake making, they all follow the same sort of concept. Now initially aerobic respiration takes place. Now aerobic respiration means respiration in presence of oxygen. Now I hope you all are aware of all these terms by now. Now in aerobic respiration what happens? The products are carbon dioxide and water. Now what is respiration in general? Respiration is the process by which sugar which is nothing but the food which is taken by the organism that is oxidized in presence of oxygen to form energy, carbon dioxide and water. So that, that is what that happens in the process of aerobic respiration. So here also initially aerobic respiration takes place because oxygen is present in the environment. Now when all the oxygen is used up then what happens? So initially what will happen? Aerobic respiration will take place. But after some time when all oxygen gets used up then what will happen? Then happens fermentation. So then fermentation happens. So this fermentation 
takes place in absence of oxygen and in this process what happens it is not CO2 and H2O which gets produced instead ethanol gets produced that is C2H5OH. Now you might ask this ethanol is nothing but an alcohol. So what happens to this alcohol during the process of baking? Now this alcohol gets evaporated during baking and that is why you would have observed that for different sort of items you need to leave the dough for different periods of time. For example, when you when you are preparing a cake or when you are preparing, um, I mean, trying to prepare bread or when you are trying to prepare, say, idli or dosa. So the time, amount of time for which you leave the dough, that is going to be different. Because if you leave it just for some time, then only aerobic respiration will be able to take place. So only carbon dioxide will be formed. But if you leave it for a very long time, then process of formation will start taking place and it is not only carbon dioxide which will be produced in addition to that alcohol will also be produced in the form of ethanol so this is how baking takes place however please make a note of this that the way the dough is treated in case of baking is little different from the way the dough is treated in case of preparing idli or dosa so we will talk about the dough of idli dosa as well so, but for all the bakery items like cakes and breads yeast is used as the raising agent and the fluffiness is due to the formation of carbon dioxide and the formation of carbon dioxide takes place by the process of fermentation so as a result of this entire process soft and spongy baked product is being formed thank you please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost watch video lessons ask questions refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.